Sampada is a one of the leading gynae oncologists of the country and is uh, nationally and internationally acclaimed for her work on cervical cancers. And who better than her to answer our questions on cervical cancer? I myself, uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Vijay Patil, I'm a medical oncologist by profession. So without wasting any time, let me ask Dr. Desai, what is cervical cancer? So sir, cervix is the lower part of the uterus. So uh, this is the uterus. And the lower mass, most part of the uterus is called as cervix. This is a part where there is a, a constant change of the uh, cells that occurs because of the hormonal changes. Since there are co constant changes in the cells that occurs, this area is more prone for developing uh, changes and hence if infected can uh, form into cancer. So the any abnormal growth that occurs, cancerous growth is, that occurs in the lower part of the uterus that is on the cervix is the cervical cancer. So, uh, this cervical cancer when it is limited only to the uh, cervix, it is in stage 1. As it starts progressing outside uh, the cervix, it becomes stage 2. In stage 3, it starts progressing in the lower part still into the vagina. And in stage four, it, it uh, reaches to the adjacent organs. So, uh, Dr. Sampada, uh, we know that January is the month of cervical cancer. We know that this cancer in India does happen in young age. We know that it is one of the common cancer. Uh, it has a high incidence to mortality ratio, which means many of the many patients who get diagnosed, quite a few patients succumb to this disease. But the good thing is, is that is that it's preventable but still it doesn't get prevented. So let's try to learn from Dr. Desai, what are the causes of cervical cancer? Why does a lady get cervical cancer? And what we can do about it? So cervical cancer is caused by a virus. We now know the cause, why, how cervical cancer is caused. It is caused by a sexually transmitted virus called as human papilloma virus. So whenever, how does this HPV spread? So, whenever a woman becomes sexually active, when we are speaking about cervical cancer, so I'm speaking about how does the woman get this cervical cancer. So, whenever a woman becomes sexually active, most of the women will get infected with this virus. But there is, our body has got something called as immunity. Our immune reactions will act against this virus and it will clear off the virus from our body. In 90% of the women, this virus will be cleared. Only a few percentage of women, this virus persists, what we call as persistent HPV infection. And it is this persistent HPV infection that is required for, that causes changes at the cellular level in the cervix, which later on gets transformed into the precancerous lesion. And over the period of time, it gets transformed into the cancerous lesion. So what are the risk factors for developing cervical cancer? Or let me ask you, who develops HPV infection? So as I said, HPV infection spreads usually by uh, sexual contact. So any person who has got many sexual partners, or if you are not having many sexual partner, if, but the partner is active with uh, many other sexual partner, you might get it from your partner. So having multiple sexual partner is a risk factor for HPV virus transmission. Another thing is that when you are young, the cervical cells are immature. So the, if the sexual activity occurs at the early age group, earlier you are exposed to the HPV infection, greater the chance that you might develop a persistent HPV infection. Similarly, if, if the childbirth occurs at the early age group or multiple childbirth occurs, then that also is a risk factor for HPV infection. As I said, HPV has to be cleared by your body, by your body's immune mechanism. So anybody who has got a less immunity, who has a compromised immunity, by, uh, for example, whoever is having HIV or cancer or is a patient of a chronic kidney failure, these people might have a decreased immunity. Hence, they might develop persistent HPV infection. Another thing that might lead to uh, persistent <laughs> HPV infection is smoking. So lifestyles also affect uh, 
the risk of developing hpv infection and the risk of developing cervical cancer so what we are worried about is a persistent hpv infection not a single so don't get worried if you get a single episode of hpv yes. infection it's the persistence of the hpv infection inability of the immune system to to uh, destroy this hpv virus that's what leads to cancer now we we heard a lot about cervical cancer up till now we we came to know what is cervical cancer why it develops how uh, how it comes in advanced stages and we also learned that hpv is an important causative agent and how hpv interplays now dr desai how can we prevent this malaria this is the second most common cancer in india how exactly we can prevent cervical cancer from happening okay so to prevent cervical cancer from happening i would uh, divide it into three three forms we can divide it first is avoid the risk factor second is prevent the hpv on infection from occurring and third screen and treat the pre cancerous lesions and the most commonly used are either pap smear test hpv dna test after the age of 30 years or in the places like this disease is a common disease in rural india where facilities might not be available or people might not be affording in that case it can be even screen with a very simple methods like visual inspection uh, applying acetic acid or a rugal iodine so pap smear more about the pap smear test i'm going to tell so pap smear test is a very simple test it can be done by any gynecologist it takes only about 2 minutes to do this test in which with the use of a cotton swab what we collect is a uh, uh, what we collect is the uh, uh, cells on the cervix which are already shed and then we examine the cell cells under the microscope so any abnormalities in the cells are been detected on this and they are accordingly treated when we do hpv dna test it is collected in a similar manner what we look here is for hp presence of the hpv dna actually india does not have a organized screening program where all our women are not going for screening so what we did in india is we did a study whether doing a single when we get a opportunity that time we screen them doing a single hpv dna test even decreased the mortality related to this cancer so whenever one gets the opportunity at least should be doing single hpv dna test and i would recommend it should be done somewhere between the ages of 35 to 40 years okay so what would you recommend is that a pap smear and after certain age a pap smear with the hpv testing would be the way to go forward and i think the american recommendations have been seen here where you could see that uh, for certain period of age you need to do it at 3 3 years after that you can increase the frequency for this uh, patients am i correct with that uh, if uh, from 21 to 29 years only H, uh, we do pap smear only so that time it is 3 yearly okay. but after 30 years what we uh, patient can undergo hpv dna test So, if you are doing co-testing with HPV DNA and a Pap smear test, the frequency can be increased to once in five years. Okay. So, if you are so twenty one to twenty nine Pap smear only, and that's at three years, twenty thirty and above. If you are doing Pap and HPV, then it would be at five years interval. Yes. And if you are doing only Pap, it still goes at three years yes. interval. What would be the upper age limit where would you recommend to stop the screening? so if a person is undergoing a regular screening at a regular interval at 65 years it is recommended to stop but if a person has not undergone a smear previously and they come at 66 year definitely will uh, check them for the with okay. the screening test okay so so just to explain when we are giving hpv vaccination we are doing something what is called as primary prevention so we are seeing that the causative agent does not harm the patient cervical cancer is preventable please consider vaccination for eligible population please get yourself screened if detected early it can be completely cured even if it is detected late we can try to try to cure you if you have any symptoms please report them early because this symptoms of like bleeding spotting or uh, post coital bleed may be a sign of cervical cancer 